In this movie, we go ahead and finish our little section on special advanced masking techniques. We exported a picture or a render of Windsor in the rigging state. We saved that into the working files folder under texture in section 8. We opened that in Photoshop created a color selection area and then applied a texture to it that is slightly lizard-like since we're turning him into Lizard Boy. At this point we brought it back into Anime Studio Pro. We imported it on the top level underneath the Windsor bone structure so that it inherits the influences of the bones that are part of the Windsor character himself. The next step is to make sure that the texture only sticks to the part of the character we want him to. And I'll have to tell you that I'm doing this in a little bit of a shortcut way so I don't drive you completely nuts with some of the details of getting the area right around the opening of the arm or the neck. To do that you would need a separate art file done exactly the same way. And that's the, the heavy lifting part of doing animation, getting everything set up to begin with. However, watching how this is applied now, you can easily imagine how you could go ahead and detail up these areas a little bit. Well, here's the trick. We come to Windsor top level. We'll open the options for that. And we're going to go ahead and open masking. And we're going to say hide all and select OK. Now everything disappears. And that's to be expected. That's OK. What we'll do now is we're going to highlight each area where we want the texture to stick open the layer palette. So the first one is the right arm, arm R. I'll open the layer options for that. We'll go to masking and we'll choose the option that says clear the mask then add this layer to it. And this will allow that texture to go ahead and stick right to the arm with the transparency values that have already been assigned to it. You could, and the purest would I suppose, create a separate texture map for each element, each arm and the head you can do that. It does save a little weight on the file size, but unless you're working with a very outdated computer, computers can deftly handle the file size of simply duplicating this texture right here. So, lizard ping, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And I'm going to drag it down to the next arm or the head, whichever shows up first, and I think it'll be head, and since this can't scroll, I'll have to release that in the layers palette. Then we're going to come down to head, and right above head, will drop it because I want it to affect the head. So I will highlight head, open the layers palette, and we'll do the exact same thing again. Next we'll duplicate the lizard ping layer one more time. Now we'll drag this down to the right arm. Looks like I'll have to release it and drag it down a little bit further. There we go. We'll do the same thing for arm left. I'll double click on that. We'll come up to masking, clear the mask, and then add this layer to it. Looks like I missed that. Let me make sure I am getting that. There we go. That's highlighted. And we can see the texture has been applied to those areas. Now you're probably wondering, well, what about the rest? And this is where we just need to go back and do a little housekeeping. We'll double click each one of these layers and go to masking and simply say don't mask this layer. And they'll each appear right after we do that. I know, I know it seems like a little busy work but that's what part of animation is, is dealing with the busy work to make it function. Almost done. Torso. top shirt, and then the eyes area, and this will apply to everything underneath it, and the eyebrows of course. Now we've got our entire character back. We'll advance to time frame one. Oh, we're missing the hair. Let's take care of that. Little sanity check there. There we go. Obviously we've got the texture missing right on the neck and this is where you would create a specialty texture and do the exact same thing that we've done. Simply applying it to the torso area. 
but have it confined to that. When we click the lizard PNG file, let's take another close look at what's going on. Under masking or under image, this option needs to be enabled warp using bones. If this option is not enabled, then when the character moves, the texture remains in one place and you get this kind of uh, strange look like the texture is running across your character. So we'll leave it like that. I'll come back to the camera zoom tool. We'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit closer so we can see our character better. And now when Windsor does his thing, we'll see the textures move with him and Lizard Boy comes to life. That's how easy it is to do some advanced special masking in Anime Studio Pro.